Yes, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen, mga ka-travels. Uh, this is Travel for More. Coach Yanni po uh, ng Travel for More, your travel guide online show. So today is uh, July 27 and uh, it's 3 o'clock. Uh, we will be staying together for more or less one hour and stay tuned. Okay, the topic for today for episode 7 uh, is Filipino seafarers on cruise chains. Challenges and opportunities. So this is a very exciting uh, topic, and and uh, we have invited uh, somebody from Panama Maritime uh, Authority to talk about um, things that has relation to the challenges and opportunities of the seafarers, particularly focus on crew change. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, please uh, join me in welcoming our guest for tonight. Uh, we have engineer. Rafael Aiseri uh, of Panama Maritime Authority. Let's give him a round of applause. Uh, Engineer Aiseri, uh, can you please uh, come in? Hello, good afternoon. How are you, Mr. Bayani? Yeah, thank you very much for joining us here. It is an honor for our show to have you as our guest. Okay, so... How is uh, your work? Okay, uh, our work here in Manila, uh, as Panama Maritime Authority, we have two branches here. One is the dedicated for the topics related to ship and ship management, technical matter for ships. And the other one is related for uh, seafarers, directly for seafarers. All the topics uh, related to licenses, endorsement, of course, uh, mm -hmm change of, of crew and all the support that is uh, intended for crew as per uh, SC, STCW convention. Yeah, that's uh, nice to hear. Okay, um, I understand you had been on training uh, and you have just finished IMO model card 6.09, which is a training course for instructors. Uh, do you intend to teach or what? Uh, Actually, uh, the course is a requirement for us to have it. However, I find the, the course very interesting. Um, I will use the information that I get from, from it to uh -huh. just not for deliver as a learning for other people, like especially in maritime, but you can also implement it or also for internal training because okay. our, our business is maritime and we have also colleagues that are also maritime and well, some of our colleagues Uh, manage different topics. We are some uh, specialists in some topics and another not. So we're also in a 
in a continuous improvement inside the office, uh, giving instruction uh, between each other. Okay, that's nice to hear. And, and, and I'm sure it gives you um, another insight on, on how it is to uh, work with the Filipino seafarers. Okay, so right now, um, the Philippines is experiencing um, difficulties, particularly on uh, changing crew. So we call it crew chains. And uh, your work in uh, Panama Maritime Authority more or less has um, ideas on how things are going on. Okay, but before, before we go to that, um, can you uh, give us an insight of how it is uh, working for a Panamanian uh, authority and then uh, working in the Philippines? Is there uh, some sort of difficulties or difference we call it challenges uh, for you to work here and serve the Filipino seafarers? Okay, actually uh, our work here, uh, as I stated before, is only engaged of Panamanian flag vessels. Okay. Uh, the difference between between our, our working here or in Panama is, I think it's not so different because the objective and the work is still the same. However, we have okay. uh, some difficulties sometimes because of the language barrier. Uh -huh. uh, even if the Philippines is a mostly country that speaks English, uh, yeah. there are some times that, that we have like a little problem with, with, the, with the language. Uh, however, uh, all the times we are we manage to solve the things in the, within the time. Uh, so uh, I've been being here almost one year in Philippines. Uh, uh -huh. Actually, the weather here and the people here and almost the culture is almost the same as my country. So uh -huh. uh, it's not being a big shock like of, of changing here of the of location, uh -huh. but the, the work is still the same, still the same. Uh, we are in contact with the mining agencies, uh -huh. with the ship agents, uh, ship uh, uh, operators of the vessels, and all the related to ships and also the, the, the seafarers. So uh, as per any difficulty here, I can only see, say that sometimes, sometimes the language barrier, but almost all the time, uh, the, there is no problem working here. Yeah, so aside from the language difficulty, how is it uh, working with uh, Filipinos? Okay, uh, at, the, at, the, at the beginning was a little difficulty because you don't know, our, our cultures are very, very alike, but there uh -huh. are some difference between us. Uh, I think that Filipinos are very good people working with hands and, uh -huh. and something like that. Uh, so we are, in Panama, we are too technical to like to uh, to stick to the to the paper. So here we, okay. we should have, like improve ourselves, like trying to explain uh, detail by detail to our uh, Filipino crew. Okay. To, to how to do the work, but when you explain them the how to do the work like properly, step by step, they are very good doing it. Very very uh -huh. good. Yeah. Yeah, so you mentioned about uh, your involvement also for, uh, say, uh, inventory of uh, documents such as uh, training certifications and dealing with uh, government agencies for uh, sending people or uh, qualifying your seafarers. How was it uh, done, for example, uh, through your office, like uh, training uh, requirements for a particular a uh, seafarer, a particular uh, position, a particular vessel? Okay, uh, that question is more related to the STCW, the convention that is yes. the big convention of all the seafarers topics for uh -huh. uh, training and, and watch keeping for the seafarers. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, this is all, all as per the, the convention. You know, Panama Maritime Authority here uh, is as the same level as the marina, that is okay. the actual maritime authority for, for Philippines. Uh -huh. So, as per S STCW, there is a, a some lines that say that if you are going to work in some flag vessels, you should have the license and the documents under that vessel. Okay. And and a, as per STCW, one administration 
could uh, accept the documents issued by other administration and just like issue the, the license or endorsement of the course based on a previous one of another administration. In this case, for Filipino seafarers here in Panama, uh, as you know, Filipino seafarers are mostly uh, the 60 or 70% of all the fleet of the world is the, the country that provides for more uh, seafarers worldwide. Uh -huh. And Panama actually is the, the, the flag with most, more flag vessels, almost with 8,000, 10,000. 10, and it means the 16% of the total fleet of the worldwide. So we are very, very uh, interconnected because uh, okay. Philippines provide Philippines provide the the workers and Panama provide the vessels. So yeah, so case, it's, it's a very nice uh, team. No, um, we we owe you a lot uh, for Panama uh, flag vessels for providing employment for the Filipino seafarers, especially in this time of pandemic. Uh, for the documentation, like uh, visa provisions, is there a participation of the Panamanian uh, Maritime Authority or for endorsement or you, uh, the seafarers are the ones who are taking charge for their own visa? Okay, for it's not for visa, it's for the endorsement of the course and the issuance of the license. What we do here in the Panama Authority, we evaluate the applications uh -huh. that Manning agencies apply through our system and they provide us the previous documentation issued by Marina. Okay. So we check that all the information provided by the seafarer, in this case for the ship manning company, mm -hmm. uh, is complete and is, is legit and was issued by Marina. So okay. in base of the previous information, previous license and certificates issued and endorsements by Marina, uh -huh. we issued and endorsed them in base of the previous one okay. to be used on their Panama flag vessels. That's our work here. Uh, actually, we have like 500 or 600 applications per day. Oh, oh or my Filipinos. God. That's very tedious. Actually, uh, we have a lot of offices uh, worldwide. We have one here in Philippines, in, in Korea, in Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. the, the most working office is, is uh, here in Philippines because there is a lot of applications per day, like 600, something like that. That's correct. So that but really, you, you more or less uh, do it always online uh, nowadays or what? Do you accept yes. walk-ins? No, or system, uh, you can provide the, you provide the information online. Only okay, online. very good. Very you good. can also provide it walk-in. However, mm -hmm. actually, mm -hmm. uh, this, this all is being managed all only online because there's not a need for the ship manning agency to come here okay. to, to provide the information that they can provide uh, electronically. However, however, they come here just to pick up the license because the license and the Siemens book are, are in, in paper. Yeah, they yeah. Are in paper, yeah. okay. So that's it. So in other words, um, if, a seafarer is ready because he is pre-qualified in terms of documentation, visa requirements, uh, maybe ticketing and, and, and the itineraries for, for his deployment, uh, joining the vessel where to go. So let's uh, uh, go to the main uh, agenda of this meeting. So uh, let's talk about crew chains. So you are handling or the ship manning agencies are the one handling this? Okay, actually the ship manning, the ship manning are the ones that they should hand, handle the, the crew changes. Okay. okay? Because but, uh -huh. the seafarer uh -huh. is under the vessel responsibility and the vessel responsibility crew is under the ship manning uh, responsibility. However, uh -huh. uh, I don't want to, to, to extend too much and to enter in another topics because we are going to discuss that, that later. Yeah. Uh, but actually, the ship manning agencies are the ones that should manage the, the crew change. Okay. However, actually, due to the COVID pandemic uh, restrictions, they have been facing a lot of problems uh, because of the some country restrictions, like uh -huh. for visa, uh, for quarantine, for uh, ban flights, okay. a lot of problems right now. 
Yeah, so so this means that at least um, you are aware, no? Uh, difficulties uh, faced by our seafarers, even if it is good news for them that uh, they are provided with employment. And thank you for uh, Panama as a country because you have a lot of vessels. Uh, which more or less, how many vessels do you have? Uh, uh, almost, be, uh, more, more than 8,000 flag vessels. More than? 8,000. Oh my God. So this means uh, it's a very... Uh, huge opportunity for Filipino seafarers, and we thank you for that. And and at least uh, for your insights, uh, for the dilemma being experienced by our uh, Filipino seafarers, uh, the uh, uh, Association of Licensed Mining Agencies in the Philippines have claimed that uh, the, the inbound floods, because we have limited uh, flights, uh, are you aware of that? So. Um, it uh, crutchens will be very difficult. Uh, employment of about 400 Filipino seafarers will be affected, and that can be a loss for the Philippine economy and probably uh, Panama as as a uh, uh, recipient of uh, Filipino seafarers will also be affected. Okay, so therefore, uh, what do you think our Filipino seafarers uh, repatriation in terms of uh, crew chains? Uh, from uh, the seafarers coming from the Philippines, uh, boarding ships, and then uh, challenges also and difficulties uh, faced by uh, the seafarers who, who will be relieved from their positions on board, especially on uh, Panamanian vessels. Okay, uh, for this, we have, uh, this topic is very, very extensive, uh, but- uh -huh. Just an insight, the main, you know. The main, the main issue is that actually, uh, we have this convention, the Marine Labor Convention, okay? Uh -huh. As per the Marine Labor Convention, a seafarer could not be on board more than 11 months. Yeah, but so, because of the, the problems prevailing, uh, they cannot go home probably on time uh, as per their contract. Yes, yes that's the problem. The, some companies uh, provide contract to the seafarers, Filipino seafarers, until 11 months, mm -hmm. maybe until six or until seven, but do COVID, they haven't been able to, to disembark the vessel. So okay. these contracts are seven, eight or nine months has been turning like 14, 15, 16 months on board. Okay. So this means so, it, uh, it will give them some psychological uh, problems no? uh, because of that uh, agony of waiting and anxieties and etc. So but, is there any intervention programs that uh, you do on board, for example, to cheer this up, uh, the, the, the seafarers, uh, to cheer them up so that, you know, uh, the families are waiting and they, they experience like they are no longer at best when they are working. So is there any intervention uh, on your end or uh, similar uh, to other companies? Okay, actually, uh, just re re retaking the, the, the conversion, these seafarers that are almost more than 11 months on board should be repatriated at once. Yes. But due to COVID restrictions, they have been not able to, to repatriate it. So yes. that's in cases of Australia at AMSA for state control, uh, Australia have uh, some restrictions during, during quarantine that they should have 15 days before mm -hmm. and after joining or leaving the vessel. Okay. And they should apply for a visa. And this visa takes for of from five to nine months. Mm -hmm. That's a big issue there. Okay, but as method of relief for for these seafarers that have been more than eleven months on board, uh, the IMO uh, has called all the flags to prom promote uh, through the operators and the operator agencies mm -hmm. of the vessels, like to provide them uh, some way to communicate with their families uh, by telephone. Uh, yeah. internet yeah yeah maybe yeah. that can help to relieve, to relieve that 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 anxious anxiety are are the are the pain to be on board more than 11 months because uh you as know that sometimes being on board is like being being jailed because you cannot yeah, go any chained and 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 there has been limitations for their things that they can do especially now uh that uh many of the shore libs are uh, almost all actually shore libs are discouraged Yes, uh, for these cases, uh, or we encourage the operators to provide the, the seafarers 
different measures to how to communicate with their families. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, as Flag State, uh, we are uh, just providing our operators uh -huh. like some authorizations to perform uh, one single voyage from one point to another point to perform cruise change. Okay. Uh, but this should be supported by an old documentation and the flight arrangement for that. Uh, that's that's the, the reason, uh, that's the way how a Panama flag has been managed in these crew changes uh, to allow the, the vessel to have this uh, one single voyage to crew change for crew change uh -huh. and to avoid any problem with the local authorities in different countries. That's the, the way that's we correct. are managing this because However, we encourage we encourage all the, the ship manning, the vessels and the operators to perform the crew change within the due time, more than in this in this situation that we have of the COVID pandemic that you should think like in six months of advance because uh, even if you want to perform a crew change, you are dealing with the problem that maybe the country that your vessel is calling uh, they don't they don't allow in the the crew change. Yes, that's, that's one. Correct. The, that's one of the of and, the problem. And, the and, other problem, yeah. the flight, the flight, the disponibility, the, the availability for the flights. Yeah, they also have a problem with that, because a lot of seafarers want to to perform crew change and the flights are full, so it's very very difficult to or, arrange. Or, or even cancelled, huh? Or even cancelled in the case of the Philippines. Uh, coming flights sometimes are redirected or cancelled. So yes. um, for, for disembarking seafarers, do, do you experience something like uh, these people are supposed to be disembarked in a particular country, but because you are not allowed uh, entry to these countries, so did you ever experience that your ship will be redirected just to uh, disembark these people? Yes, that, that's, that's one of the reasons that we, we provide the vessels this one single voyage authorizations uh -huh. because they are calling ports that they have restriction for the people to go outside the vessel or for crew change. Uh -huh. So they need to go to another port to perform this crew change. Actually, uh, here uh, through the manning agencies, Filipino Philippines manning agencies, they actually they are performing this crew change in Richard Port Richard Bay in South Af Af Africa. Uh -huh. Because they all they they they're trying to perform this crew change in Australia is very difficult because Australia is very very difficult with restrictions that's correct. right now. And that's, that's probably uh, uh, the same thing that other uh, flag states or administration are experiencing uh, together with uh, with sentiment you do. So therefore, it may generate additional expenses and 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 uh, right. you know. Uh, uh, people will be affected, particularly local mining agencies and the principals who are actually soldering yes. for all? Yes, actually, uh, the only affected with this will be the mining agencies because uh, to have a flight from one day to another is not cheap. It's not That's cheap. correct, yeah. The seafarers are not getting affected, uh, at least not, uh, not economically, because mm -hmm. they are covered by the MLC convention. Okay. They have... Uh, they have two two standards. There's the 4.2 and the 2.5 that they uh, they obligate the, the the operator of the vessel to have yeah. some financial liabilities for okay. repatriation. So uh -huh. uh, in this case, the convention obligates the the vessel to have a way how to repatriate the seafarers in a determined uh, scenario. So okay. that's in that, but however, the money they are experiencing uh, experiencing uh, losses because of this, because maybe they could like arrange one flight, but then the country that they arrange, they change the restrictions and they need to change again and change yeah. again. And that's the problem. Also, they are repatriating people in, in South Africa that uh, also the flight tickets will be expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, compared to the to disembarking them, I don't know in, in Australia, Australia or, or any Vietnam, other uh, Asia Pacific Korea, countries. Yes, or Vietnam. Yes, the other option that the the Philippine operators are taking right now is 
the vessels that operate in Asia, they are just drifting, drifting their actual course and going to Subic Bay. And then they are going to, they are performing the, the cruise change in, in Subic. Okay. So uh, this, this is an additional uh, route, no? Because it is not uh, the schedule that ships are uh, actually bound for. Or, yes. or it, um, it's, it's just a matter of uh, delaying or changing the time, but it's still the same route or what? No, they, they change the route. So they, they drift from the actual route just uh -huh. to deviate to, to, to go to Subic. That means time, uh, fuel, yeah. uh, a lot of, of another expenses that you can see, you cannot like... Uh, thing that now are important, but when you change the route, you are losing time. Uh, you are losing spaces in, in port entrance. That's correct. You are losing fuel. You pay the so, demo rates. Yeah. And you're losing cargo. It's, it's a very difficult situation. But as per MLC, the vessel is obligated to repatriate these people within 11 months or a uh, if they don't do it, they will be fined or they will be de detained. That will be a huge problem instead of just drifting. That's correct. So, so, so uh, uh, taking that, uh, this means that uh, this, uh, uh, the Philippines is a little bit uh, lax or it's, it's, it's easy to uh, disembark here because uh, in, uh, in spite of the protocols of other countries or something? I think for Filipinos, it's easier to disembark here because it's their national country. So the restriction, the restriction for them is are lower than in another country. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, uh, we in Panama, we are implemented uh, to perform this crew change also in Panama. Uh, just having low, low requirements for, for the seafarers to perform the crew change in Panama. That's okay. another... another uh, a measure that we take to help the 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 seafarers and the operators to perform these crew changes. Yeah, so th that's that's fine. But any, anyway, um, at least uh, there is uh, there are possibilities. No, uh, these are probably uh, uh, we could say that uh, it's not just a challenge; it is also an opportunity because. Uh, Philippines is giving opportunities for our Filipino seafarers to go back home in a manner by which is acceptable to say following protocols. They will be quarantined when they come, but at least they can go home. Okay, so um, how uh, important, for example, uh, for seafarers uh, to uh, accept what's uh, going on because um, I hear also that a lot of seafarers do not like to board anymore or the family does not approve of their boarding and uh, probably it's giving difficulty for uh, ship mining agencies and recruitment companies to, to hire Filipino seafarers. How do you encourage a Filipino seafarers also to join uh, Panamanian vessels or any other vessel? Okay. Uh, we encourage them because uh, Maybe the, the sea life is a little tough or mm -hmm. more than a little. Yes, but they have the, their, their rewards. Okay. Uh, actually, working as a, as a seafarer is a good thing because at least by my thinking, you don't spend in, in, in food, you yeah. don't spend in allowance, you don't uh -huh. spend, everything is given to you on board. And then you can, you can get out of board you have your vacations that you can come on board whatever the time you want, if you need it. That's, that's the reason. But actually I know, I understand the, all the, the seafarers, not only Filipinos, that they are just staying uh, at land, just I think because they don't want to be in this problem that they just want to go home and they are on board and they mm -hmm. have no way how to go on board because of the restrictions in other countries. That's maybe, correct. maybe, Maybe by this time, by this pandemic, uh, the people are not, not, not too much interested in going on board because of this. Mm -hmm. Because of this, maybe but I'm sure the that, Because, but I'm sure that 
that after this COVID uh, pandemic ends and all the restrictions get loose, I, I'm pretty sure that the Filipinos CIFER uh, will be happy to be on board again. Go back, Go. yes, because it's it's not just more of a passion. It uh, it changes the economic conditions of every family in the Philippines. And uh, of course, Panama has been providing them a lot of opportunity. So it's not yet the end. I mean, we are just probably in the middle or towards the end already that we will be uh, giving more hopes for our Filipino seafarers uh, to join again uh, the vessel, particularly for uh, uh, Panama registered vessels. Okay, so uh, is there any other information that we would like to share in order to uh, advice now it's not probably for the seafarers and other stakeholders ship mining agencies and government regulatory agencies in terms of policies do you endorse or uh, give your insights about how it is uh, to deal with uh, these situations particularly in the time of pandemic okay. my only recommendation my best recommendation to the operators to the ship manage many mining agencies is to try to perform and to arrange the, the crew change within a, a good time in advance mm -hmm. to avoid these problems because if you arrange this change of crew within within time with with a, with a, in advance eh, you will be saving money that's one that's correct and second you will be saving from the ciphers to have a uh, a psychological damage to be on board more than 11 months that is actually the the limit time as per mlc and this is mm -hmm. a this number was a is in the in this convention because they already know that after 11 months it could be like a little traumatic for the seafarers to be on board they That's also right. need this this time for resting and and to be a, a, on land at home okay so um, at this point, uh, do you have uh, uh, anything to say about uh, the Panama Maritime Authority and uh, things that you are and invite more uh, Filipino seafarers to join your vessels? Okay, actually, uh, we Panama, we are like uh, an open flag. Our vessels are flagged under Panama, but the vessels are from different nationalities, uh, operators and owners like Japanese, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Greek, but the vessels are under Panama Maritime Authority Registry. Yeah. Yes, registry. And therefore, so you take we, care of them too. We, uh, as a flag state and flag administration, we have on this this, this year and the last year, we have put in a lot of, of effort. Uh, in helping the operators and the seafarers to be safe, to be able to go out of the vessel, to be able to comply with the regulations. Because a, a vessel that has a people on board that they are not a psychological able, they yes. could pro provocate some, some injuries to themselves, to their mates, or also uh, a collision or accident of the vessel that may lead to loss of loss of property, loss of life, and damage um, pollution damage. So, this 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 part of the of the chain that is the cipher is very important because we need them to be to be okay for operating the vessels because they are the the first can we say it like defense and the first operating. Uh, the first operating piece of uh -huh. what shipping, shipping, uh, maritime shipping is. That's that's what I can say. And also, I uh, if if you want to to have the documents for applying to be on board a vessel, uh, not actually the 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 mining companies know the procedure. However, I will just uh, let you know if you don't, you don't know how it is. Uh, you should apply through the consulate and present all the documentation required for that. Also, then a technical officer will evaluate your application, approve it or deny it if it's the depending of the no. of the documentation uh, presented. And after that, the consulate will print the endorsement or the Siemens book for that uh, subject person. 
that's how we do it. it actually, as stated before, we have a lot of applications of Filipino seafarers. This office, uh, we have almost like 20 offices around the world. And this office in Manila is charging, uh, I think, the 70% of all the applications worldwide. Wow, that's that's uh, huge, and that's a big hope for our Filipino seafarers. Okay, yes. also all together with other nationalities, of course, everybody wants to survive, everybody wants to find a living, and others, you know, this is their passion, and they would like, of course, to, to go back to their world. Okay, so I think uh, we have so much that we have talked about. We have a lot of inputs that you have given us, and we have a lot of takeaways, uh, engineer. Hey, Eric, uh, we would like to take this opportunity to thank you and we will be forever be grateful for you for sharing this information. And I am very confident that it will help a lot of our Filipino seafarers to be enlightened on, um, you know, there are a lot of challenges in this time of pandemic, but still there are a lot of opportunities and we take it in a positive way that provides employment for our seafarers, not only for the Filipinos, but all over the world. So that was very enriching. And uh, we would like to thank you again. Uh, for our televiewers, uh, please join me in thanking our uh, guests for today. Uh, we have a uh, very limited time uh, engineer. Uh, so thank you so much for joining me here. And there are still a lot of episodes coming up and hopefully we will be dealing again with seafarers in the future. So uh, for our televiewers, let us thank our guest, uh, engineer Rafael A. Seric. Let's give him a round of applause. Thank you so much for joining and I, we will see you again in our uh, next episodes and hopefully we'll be able to get in touch with you again. So thank you so much. Uh, for the meantime, please stay put. Uh, gentlemen, our audience, um, we are... Thank you for staying with us. At this point, we would like to invite you for our next episodes and uh, the, the rest of the shows in the Great Ten Sub Channel. Um, please continue watching our programs. We have different teams and all these contribute to the greatness of everybody. Uh, as uh, human beings, we change lives of our people and hopefully we are do doing something positive for their uh, discovery, development, and uh, greatness within. So for um, every Tuesday, we call it uh, Tuesday Greatness. Uh, we have our shows, it's prayer time from 12 to 1 by Coach Ira. We have, of course, uh, my, my program, uh, Travel Pamor, Coach Yani. It's 3 to 4 p.m. And, and we have uh, 5 to 6 p.m. Teacherpreneur by Coach Marife. We have uh, teaching out of the box 6 to 7 p.m. by Coach Hari. Um, 7 to 8 p.m. transformed by Coach Jaren. Uh, speak um, with success with uh, 8 to 9 p.m. And also Coach Harvey, uh, which is uh, 4 to 5 p.m. Uh, great shopping. Okay, so. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, again, thank you very much for watching. I would like to thank uh, I help uh, Coaching and Business Solutions Incorporated for this opportunity and uh, the NetHub channel for airing programs like this. If you would like to subscribe or to uh, avail of the different services, training programs, you can log on to uh, the website of I help uh, Coaching and Business Solutions and uh, the Greatness Hub ch online channel. Also, I would like to thank my company, ABCS Plus Travel and Tours, um, that would uh, provide you with the different information about travel, ticketing, travel and tours, and uh, insurance and uh, related uh, matters. So thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon once again to our guest, uh, Engineer Rafael Eseric. Thank you so much for being our guest. It's an honor again. Uh, to have you in our show. Uh, good luck and uh, uh, hope that you have your uh, enjoyable stay in the Philippines providing uh, services to the Filipino seafarers. So once again, thank you so much. ABC.
Philippines Bus Traveling Tours, WCA Travel Affiliate, is dedicated to provide affordable, quality, competitive travel and hospitality products and services to every lifestyle-conscious consumer all across the globe. ABCS Plus Travel and Tours wants to fulfill WCA Travel's mission, which is to be of great help to every individual or family, so they can have extraordinary travel experiences by giving them only the best options for their travel needs. with us and enjoy big discounts, awesome promos, and tour packages. ABCS Plus Travel and Tours at your service for your travel needs. What are you waiting for? Book now. Travel the world. Live the dream. Make a difference.